Today we're diving into some more Figma design practice with an iOS app. Hey guys, it's Kaylor. Welcome to the YouTube channel. If you missed part one to this, we created two screens for a streaming app. I'll link that on the screen now. Make sure you go check that out before going through this part, which is part two, where we create three more screens to complete our streaming app design tutorial. So with that said, let's go ahead and dive into part two of this streaming app in Figma. Real quick before we get started with that, the completed project is available to members. So if you're a member, you can head over to the community tab and download that if you're interested. So we're gonna continue on with our streaming app today. So I'm just gonna create a new frame. And this is for the iPhone 13 Pro Max. I'm gonna go ahead and double click on the title of this frame and just call it profile screen. Set it to black since we're working with a dark theme. I'm gonna drag in our rulers now. So I'm gonna put 36 spacing on the left and the right. So I'm gonna drag out a guide for that on the left. 36 from the bottom. And then for the top, I'm gonna to drag one down the 72 points from the top of the frame. So I'm gonna to go to my assets and I'm using the untitled UI icons kit once again. I'm gonna search for an edit icon. This one looks pretty good, so I'll drag that in. And I'm gonna change the selection color to white so we can see it. And we'll just drag it and put that in the top right hand corner. So for our profile screen, I'm going to have the profile image here in the screen with a bit of a banner behind it, then some stats, and then followed by some of the favorite characters and favorite shows listed at the bottom. So let's create that banner at the top. I'm gonna to grab the rectangle tool and just click and drag one out here. Full width of our frame and then a left square bracket key to send it all the way to the back. For the height on this, I'm gonna go with about 246 points. And then for the corner radius, I'm gonna select this icon, which lets me adjust them individually. And I'm gonna put 40 on the bottoms and leave the tops the way they are. So we have this nice rounded look. Then I'm gonna go to fill. I'm gonna change it to an image and just select an image. Next, I'm gonna hit the plus on the fill, which will give us a straight black color and then I'm gonna set the opacity to 60%, just to give it a bit of an overlay so that everything we put on top of this pops nicely like this icon. Then we want a super large profile icon, so I'm gonna hit R for the rectangle tool, and I'm just gonna drag one out that's 128 by 128. And then I'm going to center that vertically with the bottom of that banner. And then I'm gonna make sure that's centered horizontally inside of our frame. Let's put a 20 border radius on that. Then I'm going to go to the stroke. I'm gonna add one to the outside and we're gonna bump it up to two points. And I'm gonna set this to the primary purple that I'm using throughout my project. It's up to you if you wanna customize this, but my color is 907 for F7. Then I can just fill that in with an image of my choice. Then below the profile icon, let's have the name of the user. I'll just type my name in. We'll bump this up to 24 points. I'm gonna leave it at bold and I'm gonna make sure it's center aligned. Then I'm gonna center align it to my frame and put it 16 points below our profile icon. Holding option or alt will give us another text we can work with here. And we're actually gonna create the at, like the username. So I'm gonna lower this down to 12 to make it smaller. We'll leave it at bold, but I'm gonna change it to a purple. And then I'm going to create the username by just putting an at and adjusting everything to lowercase and removing the spaces. Then we'll move that up four points below the name and make sure that's centered in our frame. That's looking pretty good. Now let's create some stats for the user. So I'm just gonna grab a piece of text and we'll input the first stat, which is watched. So I want the actual time that this person has spent watching anime in this app to be displayed. So for this font, we'll make it slightly larger than this one. We'll go with 14. Then I'm gonna set the weight to medium and pressing six on the keyboard will set the opacity to 60%, making it a nice gray color. So above that, we'll have some text displaying how much time they've spent. So this person has watched 50.3 days of time in this app. And for this, we'll bump it up to 16. I'm gonna bring it back to 100% opacity. And then I'm going to bump it up to bold. Then I'm gonna grab both of these clicking and dragging, shift A to put that into an auto layout. First, I'm gonna change the alignment to the center here on this alignment panel. Then the space in between, let's set that to four. And then we can hold option or alt to duplicate this and we'll create another statistic. 
This time I'm going to have the completed shows. So they've completed 70 shows. Let's duplicate that once more, holding Option or Alt. And then the amount of followers this person has. And of course, if you want to display more stats, just copy and paste another one. Maybe you show how many people they're following. But for me, I think this looks good. Then I'm going to use another auto layout. So let's click and drag to grab all three of those and then hit Shift A. And we'll put 48 points in between all of those. And then I'm going to center that auto layout to my frame and put it, let's see, 24 from the bottom of that username. So if you remember from the previous video, we're using 36 points in between each section. Since this is kind of grouped with this section, it's kind of like a secondary spacing thing. I'm gonna minimize that to 24. So below this now, we'll go 36 to the next section, which is the favorite characters. So T on the keyboard, and I'll just type that out. We'll put that on the left-hand guide there and 36 points from the bottom of those statistics. Pressing R on the keyboard will give us the rectangle tool. We'll just drag one out, 98 by 142. Setting the border radius on that to eight to give us those nice rounded edges. I'm gonna put this 16 points below that text, and then I'm gonna touch it onto the left guide. Then let's create another piece of text, and this is going to be for the character name. So for the character name, I'm gonna drop that down to 12. I'm gonna set it to a medium weight and make sure it's center aligned. And then pressing six once more on the keyboard to lower it down to 60% opacity. I'm then going to center this with our rectangle and I'm gonna click and drag to grab the name and the rectangle and use another auto layout, shift A. I'm just gonna make sure that's set to the center. And then for the space in between, I'm gonna put that to eight. So with that auto layout created, let's command C or control C, command V, control V to duplicate it and then put 16 points in between them. Then I'm gonna select both of those auto layouts and put them in another auto layout with Shift A. Then I can just select one of these and copy and paste it a few times until it runs off the side of the screen. Then we can just update the content with the character name and the character image. So I'll go ahead and do that now. So I'm gonna grab the menu bar from the previous video. So I'm just gonna hold Option or Alt and click and drag that over. And then I'm going to position that to the bottom and center. Then I need to double click to select the home icon I'll change it to white, and then I'm gonna put the opacity on this down to 60%. Then on the profile icon, we can up it to 100%, and then set it to a purple to show that we have selected this screen. Now the next thing down here to fill up this space is I'm just going to click and drag to grab this entire section, hold Option or Alt to click and drag down. And I'm actually just gonna drag this down to the pasteboard so I can easily edit it. And then while we have that selected, I'm gonna hit Shift A to convert that to an auto layout. And then I'm going to update this to say favorite anime. And then it's just a matter of going through and changing each one of these icons to a anime and changing and updating the name, which I'll do now. So now that I've updated that, I'm just gonna name this frame and we'll go ahead and drag that back into our design gonna align that on that left hand guideline and then make sure it's 36 points below our favorite characters there then simply left square bracket key to move that all the way to the bottom and then I'm gonna grab that overlay we created it's just a gradient and paste that in so that it kind of makes that gradually fade into black there so now that we have three screens let's make a sign-in screen I just added the same guys we've been using throughout and let's just add a back icon to this first. This flip back one looks kind of cool. We'll throw that one in there, change it to white. And then let's actually make this one a little larger. So 32 by 32 and put that in the top left corner on our guides. Next, we need some text below it. Just type in some junk text and we'll set this to bold since it's a heading and I'll set the size to 26 points. And then I'm just going to paste in some text here I'm going to put that 36 points below our arrow icon and I'll make it the full width from guide to guide there. Below that, we need some input fields for our email and password. Those are pretty easy to make. We'll just hit T on the keyboard and I'm just going to type in email or username since I want the users to be able to use either or. And we'll set that to 16 and medium weight, 60% opacity. So six on the keyboard, we'll set that. Then I'm gonna hit Shift A to add an auto layout around that. And we'll immediately apply a fill to this so we can see what we're doing. 
and I'll just change the fill color on that to 1A, 19, 1B. So now we have that light gray we've been using throughout our design. I'm gonna set this to the middle left for alignment. The space in between, I'm gonna set to zero since we only have one element. I'm gonna put 24 on the left and the right for padding, and then 24 for the top and the bottom. I'm then just gonna to touch this onto the left-hand guide and then drag the right side all the way over to expand that to full width. We can now put this 36 points below our heading. Set a border radius of 12 and then hold option or alt to duplicate it, putting 16 points in between each of them and then update this one just to say password. Lastly, we need a sign in down here and a don't have an account. I can easily just copy and paste these from over here. But in case you didn't watch the last video, I'll just create them really quick. So we'll just put sign in, bump that up to bold 16 point, and then shift A to wrap that into a auto layout. Then I'm going to apply a purple fill to this. For the padding, I'm gonna set the top and the bottom to 24. I'll just make sure it's centered in my frame first, and then I'm gonna hold option or alt and drag out the sides to fit this frame. Setting this to a 12 on the border radius. Then I'm just gonna drag this and position it 32 points from the bottom of our guide down there. And then T on the keyboard one more time, asking the user if they don't have an account and they would like to register. Setting that to normal weight, or regular rather, and then I'm gonna select register and set it to a bold. Make sure that's center aligned, center it to our frame, and then put that 32 above our button. With that selected, I'm gonna hit six on the keyboard to set that to 60% opacity. And so we have a get started screen. They can hit sign in. They can enter their email and password, then officially hit sign in. Go to the home screen. They can click on the profile icon in the bottom right to see their profile. Let's do one final bonus screen in this video. I'm just gonna grab an iPhone 13 Pro Max screen one more time, set it to black, and this time I'm gonna set it to landscape mode. So here in landscape mode, I'm gonna call this full screen video. We're now gonna create a video player. So I'm just gonna set my guides with Shift R to open up the ruler. And this time I'm just going to have them all 36 points. So we're gonna set that here. So now that we have that, let's drag in some icons. I'm gonna grab a play button icon, throw that in there. We'll set that to white and let's set it to 64 by 64 to make it nice and easy to click on. And then I'm just gonna center align it vertically and horizontally. Then we need the skip buttons for skipping 10 seconds back and forth, which I don't believe this icon set has. Let me see if material icons has one. So there we go, we have 10 seconds forward. We'll drag that one in and 10 seconds back. So I'm grabbing both of those holding shift. I'm gonna change them to white. Then I'm gonna change the scale on both of them to 32 by 32. I'm gonna center align these vertically and then I'm gonna put 48 spacing to the left and right of the play button. Lastly, we need some icons in the corner. So I'm just gonna grab a full screen exit icon, put that to white and then throw that in the top right hand corner. Next to that, let's have a settings cog, throw that in there. And then finally, throw a cast connect icon in there to connect to other devices. And then we'll put 24 points in between all of these. And then finally, let's grab a rectangle, throw that in the background. So I'm gonna make it full width of our frame. Left square bracket key to send it all the way to the back. I'm gonna put a screenshot of the video in there. You can also actually put a video in there, but I'm just gonna do a screenshot. And then I'm gonna set that to about 15% opacity. So we have that. So now we have a full screen video. So that's creating five screens for a streaming app. And if you're actually interested in taking this a step further in creating a high fidelity prototype, I've actually uploaded a video already on that using this exact design in Protopie. So that's actually the prototype you've been seeing in this video. So if you're interested in that, I'll link it on the screen now. But for now, that's gonna do it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you give it a like. Subscribe for more design-related videos every single week. And in the meantime, check out these videos. And as always, have a great day, and I'll see you guys in the next one.